Hey, welcome back to another episode of It Resolves. My name is Kevin. My name is Will. Thank you for tuning in, watching, or listening, doing it, however you're doing it, where you're doing it. It is <laughs> incredible that I remembered that. It is really um, incredible. Um, because it's been 84 years. Dude, it has been such episode. a long time since we've done a podcast episode. It is amazing to be back. Uh, I will say it is not for lack of trying. <laughs> uh, no, this is our third or fourth attempt. Yeah, we're on three or four now. Um, we have had so many issues in recording that were very unexpected for the most part. Some of them were just faults on my end on setup. Uh, the last one in particular should have worked for all intents and purposes. Everything was set up correctly. Uh, don't you don't you blame yourself for whatever I, that met was, it, sir? It is what it is. Oh, dude, <gasps> you started moving. <laughs> we hadn't acknowledged it yet. Um, Miraculous. So, he yeah, appears. we like jumped on this call and we'll just like froze. And then we were like, well, I guess we'll just run with it because it keeps happening. Like we tried in and out a couple times and it's back. You're back. I That's see you incredible. moving. Um, I'm afraid that if I move too much. Yeah. Kevin, help. <laughs> I'm in a tiny box. It's uh, the, the walls. <laughs> um, that's only for the YouTube viewers. If you're still listening on the podcast, thank you. You're the real OGs. For real. Um, and uh, we're just happy to be back. And we to are. Have you back and to it's be talking so, about oh, so good a to be game back. that um, is still being played. Thank goodness. There it is. Not the for country. lack of wizards trying to like shut it down with a million bannings. Um, just kidding. Well, not only- I'm not tilted. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah. Oh, that was another thing. We had a whole episode talking about um, companions and how good they were and if, if they were too good and blah, blah, blah. Yep. Like a week or two before they banned them. Yep. Um, and that episode got lost to the Aether. It did. It is, who knows where it is right now. Yeah. Maybe Unfortunately. alternate Earth bus. Maybe they put it out and it's good. But yep. Hopefully. This one uh, hopefully this one doesn't fail uh but what i will say before we get too far into this um first of all this is sponsored by grand slam uh comics and collectibles uh the whole podcast is now sponsored by them not just the crack uh the reason we're doing that is because we're changing up our crack pack format which you'll see hey you froze again um uh so thank you to grand slam for uh for helping us out (laughs) and being part of this oh you're back (laughs) this is gonna be continuous it's fine it's Who fine. Knows? It's, it's fine. Everything's fine. Um, anyway, uh, fine. what we are talking about on today's episode, we've got three brand new sets coming up very, very soon. One coming in less than a month. Uh, and we're really excited about some of them, but we also wanted to kind of talk about our, uh, not our hiccups, but our our reservations maybe on some Good of word. these. Good work. Uh, Good work. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, and we'll we'll kind of go over these in detail, but we are going to be talking, of course, about Corset 2021. There's a lot to talk about there. Uh, yes, uh, Jumpstart uh, with spoilers coming out now. There's a lot more to talk about there, and Double Masters. So we are doing triple sets in this one. This is going to be a packed episode uh, to bring back on. So I'm pretty excited. This is going to be a good, um, thick episode. Thick. There it is. Um, I- forgot that we could swear again and i yeah dude not, fuck that, it. not that it's come up naturally but i just i forgot it's fine you can <laughs> this is very, the only video conferences i've had for four months have been professional um, well this is anything but that <laughs> it's, it's refreshing. um all right well let's go ahead uh we're gonna kick things off as we always do i'm so excited to do this again the random card of the day are we Get ready it. I'm so ready. I'm I am piped. Yes. Dude. Wait, no, torqued. Torqued. Piped is something different. Piped <laughs> is I am not piped. <laughs> All right. Beginning. We're gonna move off of the piped. Three, two, one. Don't you on, baby. Nope. All right. Yes. <laughs> All the classics. Make All right. Good. Return. No. You didn't see that about... first one. <laughs> didn't that happen um, once before with Tyler? Hold on. We're moving back. Neat. Third, that is the third time we've we gotten a gotten basic a basic mountain no less we have never what? gotten a plain island forest or that other one it's always been a mountain <laughs> <laughs> all right well all right moving back let's get it jackal pup is our card here uh this is actually a pretty think, cool one 
I think we've also talked about Jackalpup before. We um, might have. Um, maybe, or maybe I just like... I don't know. I really like this card, though. I mean, it's a good one. Yeah. Uh, it's a 2-1 one for 1 red. Uh, for each 1 damage dealt to Jackal Pup, it does deal 1 damage to you, which is certainly a downside. Um, but what I will say, at the time uh, of, what, Tempest, uh, creatures were not necessarily as overpowered as they sometimes are now. Uh, and so a 2-1 one for 1 is, like, super good value uh, at that time. Um, and we can see, I mean, it was in two back-to-back -back World Championship decks, like... It's a good card for the time. Um, looking at it now, obviously, we've got better options uh, if you're looking at constructed formats, especially things like Eternal formats. There are a million better options now. Um, you look at, like, Goblin Guide or something. But um, yeah. this is still... I mean, I do maintain that at the time, I think this was a very good card. Um, and certainly in draft, I think it's fine if you're, you know... Absolutely. It's, it's good value. So, like, I would take it. Uh, yeah, I would as well. Absolutely. Um, this this kind of is back in the day when Magic was like, Wizards were afraid to print great creatures in general, but also I feel like it's taken them a long time, almost as long as I've been alive, to kind of figure out how much value to put at a one-drop creature. Yeah. Um, and it, that's varied over the years, right? I think you hit the best one with Goblin Guide. Um, uh, yeah. For red, is for red especially. Looking at that for a second, I think Goblin Guy's probably the best. Delver of Secrets, you might be able to say, is a better one drop creature. Well, and Deathrite Shaman uh, is up there. Well, excuse me, I forgot the Mac Daddy. Yeah, dude, uh, Baby Planeswalker, the, the BDB, the Big Dick Boy. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I did, I did forget um, Deathrite Shaman. However, uh, uh, but I think for uh, aggro purposes, you're right. I mean, Goblin God's definitely the best for aggro. Yep, yep, yep. yep. That's all I want to say about Jackal Pup. Yeah. I lost whatever else it was. Two power is fine on a one drop. Yeah. The payoff is negligible. Yeah. Because he got so early. So he's great. Love him. Pet him. Here's a treat. Go away. Yep. There it is. Uh, I'm pretty happy with that. That's a perfectly fine card. Two to... new cards. I'm done with that one. Um, I love that we got Mountain first off. All right. Um, all right. I so prediction. How many more times will that happen? Mountain uh... specific. Depends. How long do you think we'll have the podcast? <laughs> that we joked. We've you. joked so many how times you. about quitting. How dare you? That Sir. peaky mic. How dare you? We need to work on your audio, by the way. I'll work on your mom's audio. There it is. All right. So, what set would you like to start with, Will? Um. Since we have three options. I am the least excited to talk about um, Double Masters. Do you want to just go in reverse release order? So we'll start Double Masters, Jumpstart, and then yes. end on Core Set? All right, we can do that. Optimal. Great pathing. I like okay. that. I think that's solid. So uh, to start, Double Masters. Uh, this is obviously the latest edition of the Masters set. We haven't. Uh, I'm trying to think the last actual Masters set that we had. I can't really remember. Um, it's been like three years it's been a little while i'm sure i'm forgetting something but uh this is set to release on august 7th uh so we've got a little bit of time before this one hits but we've already had a couple spoilers and i will go ahead yeah. and say they're pretty bomb spoilers you're seeing them on the screen right now uh doubling season blight steel atraxa mana crypt and kalia all very very good uh and as you may notice we do have some uh box topper additions uh, included with this, which is going to be really, really yeah. sweet. Um, but there's a gimmick with this one, uh, hence being cool. called Double Masters. Um, the packs are 24 cards, uh, which oh. I think is really... And, and, no, wait, wait, wait. I might be mixing this up. Excuse me. Mm -hmm. uh, jump start. That's Jumpstart. But we do get double rares and double foils, I believe, in every pack of these, uh, which I think is interesting. Um, certainly adds to the potential value. Um, assuming that we're going to have continuous, like, good reprints like these. Yeah. Um, but, I gotta be honest, that feels gimmicky. I, I don't know. I mean, so, I love value. I like sets with a bunch of stuff in it, chase cards. Who doesn't? Uh, that's kind of magic, and has always been magic. Yeah. Um, my, like, if this is the cream of the crop right here, I'm not super excited to pay premium prices for it because like i look around at, at these these cards um 
all of my friends who are commander buffs pretty much already have these. Yeah. Um, which let's be let's be real. At this point, the, correct me if I'm wrong. Like, don't even correct me. I answered my own question. Forget <laughs> about it. Yeah. Um, this is pretty much a commander product if you think about it, right? Like, um, I mean, based on what they've shown so far, it certainly seems to be leaning that way. I mean, where else? Right. Atraxa and Kalia, pretty heavy hits for commander. Yeah, um, you're not going to play. Where I mean, do you play doubling season constructed? Yeah. Uh, where do you play Blight Steel? Like vintage sometimes. Okay. Sure. Um, and Mana Crypt, but, yeah, but like it's right, definitely right. more for the commander player. As as I think often these products tend to be though, right? Like that tends and to be the strong point. suit. That's my point. Is that um, I mean th these are great for commander players. Uh, the price point is going to be like kind of my. Pardon me. <laughs> um, that's going to be my sticky point for this. Is well, I can. How, how much am I paying to maybe get some good commander cards? I don't know. I can tell you right now. Um, obviously, Wizards kind of took away their MSRP thing a, a little while back, but uh, Amazon is setting the price roughly at sixteen dollars and thirty cents per booster pack. Um, and it is 15 cards. That was just I'm mixing up jump starts. So it is 15 cards, but you do have the opportunity to get double rare or mythic slots uh, and double foil slots. So I, Which I mean, could also be rares as well. So like yeah, so you have potential to get like four mythics in a pack, like which would be amazing. But like you know, obviously that's corner case. You can't just bank on that every time. Right, right. Um, I think like I. I think I'm doing the thing that Magic players love to do, where it's like, oh, this thing is probably not going to be as good. But, like, <laughs> I would never be upset to open one of these. Yeah. Um, I just, I wouldn't go out and buy a bunch. But, no. like, because um, if I'm building commander stuff, I'm going to buy singles. Yeah. And that's just me. But, like, I can see the, the value and the appeal of opening, a, like, a god pack. Yeah. So, Can hey. I just point out, too, that Mana Crypt seems to be their new, like, uh, it's sort of like the Birds of Paradise effect where they've just reprinted it so many times now. <laughs> um, like, Birds of Paradise was printed, like, ten times or something like yeah. that. Like, it was it a was. really good card. It still is a good card, obviously, and Mana Crypt, obviously, is a good card, but it's one of those that's like, do we really need this many reprints? Because, like, you're killing the value eventually. <laughs> like, <laughs> And that's the other thing is, like, do collectors like this product? Mm, I don't know. I don't like, know. collectors want OG versions, right? Sure, 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 sure. But like even the OG versions, but the nature of magic makes uh, any version of a card go down less. Yeah, go down. Yeah, value yeah. uh, it's reprinted, yeah. right? Uh, I don't know. How, what do you think about real quick the um, just the alternate art on some of these we got? Uh, some I like, some I don't. Uh, I'll I'll go ahead and say it. so. Like um, doubling seasons, just cute. Like I'm in. Um, Blight sure. Steel Colossus, I think, is fine. We actually made a proxy of that. Um, Atraxa, I think, is quite good. Um, it's not quite as menacing as OG Atraxa, but I really like it. Uh, I just, I think, color-wise, it's really pretty. And again, we did a, a proxy of that one. Um, yeah. Mana Crypt, I, no, I, I don't care about it. Um, you know what it looks like? What? The first Stolas album uh, art. <laughs> I love it. Um it does kind of oh my goodness you're right um and then kalia i actually don't like kalia the new art no it's very like uh high class comic book kind of art there it feels um, like it right like i get the I, I get the premise like it looks i think the composition looks good i don't like the colors it feels very flat really yeah i think Art's it feels kind of, flat i like the violet hue you know the kind of like subtle i it's uh, fine purpley notes i just think if but... you're if you're gonna do a bold piece of art which this is okay this is my graphic design sorry for those of you that don't care about this shit but i'm a graphic design nerd so this is kind of what i do literally for a living um my issue with it Fair is enough. like the red is fairly bold and the composition mm -hmm. is very bold like it's a very centered composition so it's got the renaissance era like triangular composition going on so it's very like it's a strong composition but like the wings kind of fade into the background and like the purple hue is pretty, but it doesn't really pop in my opinion. Um, sure. Keeping in mind that that is my opinion on art. So like if you disagree, fuck off, I don't care. But like <laughs> that's just that's just my take on it. I think the red gets to be pretty bold, sure. but like that's about it. And so 
I like it. I like it better than original Kalia. I think that. it's a cooler like composition than original Kalia, but the colors of the original Kalia I like more. They're just darker. It's just a few shades darker, really. It's mu- It's moodier, and I think that that adds a menacing feel to it, and I yeah, like that. But it's not epic. But it is an epic. You're right, and that's fine. I'm just telling this you what epic. I'm just telling you my take on it. Original Kalia is um, box cello sweet in C. <laughs> yeah. New Kalia is like, uh, what's that one that goes? Um, I'm not gonna try and like scat classical music right Let's now. Let me go for it, that. please. I put the camera back on um, you, Will. Let's go. All right. <clears throat> what's the one that goes? Um. Bum, 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 bum. <laughs> All right, anyway, back to this. Um, <laughs> you know the one. I do. I totally know. It um, starts real low. And yeah. It goes way up. Oh, okay. <laughs> I think. Can we move on? This is such an odd that, conversation. <laughs> that we have exhausted all we can talk about with this set, only yeah. having like four cards realistically. Yeah. <laughs> um, I will fun. say, I mean, again, the value is going to be awesome because it is a master set. I wonder what the um, the skew of that value ends up being. Like, obviously, they're going to spoil the good stuff first uh, to build the hype. Um, so I just wonder, like, in the rare slot, for instance, how much actual value is going to be there versus the mythic slot? Because, hey, mythic can be great all day. It usually is. It's a matter yeah. of where's the rarity throughout the pack um, and what the value is there that makes it more worth it. So I, point. I'm i interested to see how this lands once we start getting into more spoilers. But I do think the double masters, like, ooh, you get two of everything, is like, okay, I, nobody asked for that. Like, <laughs> it just seems kind of random. Yeah. 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 Um, but yeah. that's just my take. Um, <laughs> moving on to... Next. Jump start. Uh, so let me get oh, my, my info up here. Uh, so jump start uh, is a standalone product. Yeah. When is it releasing? I'm looking for release date. Sorry, guys. Uh, July 16th. Nope, that's when it's going to be added to Arena. Come up. Oh, here we go. Pre-release. Excuse me. Is July? <laughs> what? What'd you say? I don't know. I don't know what you're. I'm looking for the release date. What are you talking about? Anyway, um, it's coming out mid-July. I don't, I don't remember what I said. Okay. I just said something. I don't remember what it was. So, I'm so sorry. <laughs> you're fine. So speaking of gimmicks, man, um, and I'm not right. saying I'm not excited about this, but the idea here is that we have 46 different themes. So we can see kind of a theme here is the plus one theme or the spooky theme. Uh, and you buy a booster pack of, I believe it's 20 cards, uh, technically. 20. And there's, I think you're right at 24. No, 24 is how many are per booster box. Uh, I believe it's 20 cards per pack, though. Um, okay. Uh, I, I'll confirm as we go along, because clearly I did homework. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 20 cards in a pack. Okay, that's what I wanted to make sure. Seven or eight of those cards are lands, but each new, like, little theme is getting a new, like, basic land art, which I think is kind of cool. Like, that's nice. We get a little bit of a themed land with each eh. one. Um, eh. It doesn't add value. It's just kind of a cool touch. Um, and the whole idea here is you buy two of these packs, you shuffle them up, and yeah. you have a playable deck. Um, they are all monocolored except for like the rainbow one or something like that. Um, I believe that's correct. Most of them are monocolored, if not all. Um, yeah. And so it's multicolored or something like that. Yeah. There's like literally it's called rainbow or something. But the idea here is that it should be very easy for anybody. It's like it's sort of like drafting without drafting. It's like here's these this random deck that you have no idea what could technically be in it or something and you just put them together and see how it goes or something like i don't know man it feels yeah, weird I, so they coined it as combining like elements of constructed and draft yeah and i'm like eh. here's my question are these like so the spooky theme this is a set pack is that yeah. true um that's my question so that's what i'm not 100 100- 100% sure of, excuse me. Um, but I believe um, that I think they are a set pack. So I guess if you do your homework, you know what you're getting. Um, but right. like, 
my packs thing aren't marked. It's random, right? I don't know. That's what I'm not sure of. Um, oh hell. These are the things that we could have done more homework on and didn't, but that's fine. Um, my thing is like, again, this out. is like nobody, nobody asked for the like. It's fine. It's a cool little idea. Like, I'm not. I don't want to sit here and just hate on everything Wizards is doing right now because like this is fun. It's. I like that they're trying new things. I like that take. But this, and I think you is said it, it fun? best. Okay, but that exactly. That's my thing. Like Battle Bond. You brought up Battle Bond when we were talking about this episode idea, and it was like. Nobody played Battle Bond as it was intended to be played. Like people just bought it to to like do to either regular them. to get you know reprint stuff. Which I will say there's some pretty good reprints in this. Like Oracles uh, in here. I think we've got Crater Hoof back in. Um, all the Planeswalkers from Core 2021 are in this. Um, and you'll notice if you look at like the uh, the symbol on the cards here. Any of the new 2021 cards, which there's a pretty large abundance of them in this set um, are marked as such while the rest have the actual jumpstart uh, icon. Uh, and I think that that's interesting, but like, what's the point? That just seems kind of silly. Um, I okay, don't know. So, by the way, quick little, quick little tidbit here. Um, the packs are randomized still. Oh, good. So, okay. Uh, so you could have some really good themes. Yeah. Or here's, here's, here's my problem with this kind of immediately. Uh, the variance is all over the place. Yeah. Which I get is like part of Magic's appeal, right? Part of the appeal of drafting is that you don't really know what you're going to get. Yeah. But you, the bigger, the bigger like takeaway from that is you get to make something focused off of something random. Yeah. Like in this, my problem is that you just take random, smush it together and, and go for it. Sure. Um, so I, you, I guess you get to look at it and say like, "All right, I had, I ha this is my plan." I guess I don't like. I would rather think about it a little harder than just put two packs together and go for it. Yeah. Um, to me, there is no element of constructed. Like, yeah, I don't really get that. You're subject to the pack still. So how in the world is it actually constructed? I guess because there's a, a smaller range of things you can get if you know you have two of if if you know you have some. I mean, some yeah, of but narrowing down your card pool is like saying, well, here's this like half sized set, draft it. You know what right. I'm like? That's not. <laughs> what are you really doing? Yeah. With these, like, with some of these, with some of these uh, themes, like they're not right now. They're not exciting to me. Minotaurs is okay. That seems kind of. I fun. mean, sure. <laughs> Rogue fun anytime i play with gaunty is cool but like above the clouds is just flyers that do maybe some fun stuff like i don't yeah. no I'm i don't i don't see, i don't see this being successful i'm gonna be real um i don't see it being successful for what it was intended for i think you know people will probably open it and people will like opening it because it's a different experience but like my thing is maybe. I, I mean, I like drafting. <laughs> um, right. I don't Love draft. I don't really want to not draft. You know what I mean? And like, if I'm playing constructed, well, I want to have a very strong say in what I'm going to play. So this is just like a middle ground thing. And I feel like middle grounds, especially in like this kind of format, I don't really think succeed as well as I think the intended hope is. Um, I think if it's if it's too defined, it kind of loses a little bit of its yeah like, luster. Like um, magic in general is one of the biggest things they tout is you have complete expression about what you play. What yeah. you play. And that has always been more for constructed, but like even with limited, you have complete control over what kind of deck you want, yeah. whether or not it's a quote unquote right choice to make to draft. You still have like, I'm just going to draft a bunch of like red, white beaters this time and see if that works. Yeah, like, absolutely. Opportunity. And I just, I feel like this loses some of it. No, I think uh, you're exactly um, right. I I think, you know, I, I moved us back to this screen because we're just kind of ranting and I was just kind of scrolling through and I felt weird about it. So... It's fine. Um, here we are. Here we are. Uh, my thing is like, you know, so there's this uh, there's this study that was done. I'm, I'm relating this to creativity in general. Um, oh. Okay. Yeah. Which is... Uh, so creative people 
tend to think that they can like you know out of with no constraints all the possibilities in the world that they can create their best work whether that be you know a poster for a thing or whatever it happens to be that tends to be their thought process however in practice you find that it's actually better to have just some constraints like one very clear constraint that you have to stick within maybe that's a theme that you're going for or a color scheme or you know whatever it happens to be and that way you've got a foundation and then your creativity can take that foundation and run wild with it instead of just saying, here's every little thing that you can do and it's just empty mass. You know what I'm saying? Um, and there was sure. a study done that kind of proved that thinking that was actually like very correct. And I, I like that. I, I think that that's really interesting. My thing is this okay. takes, this kind of gives you, I don't know if it's too many constraints or just takes everything away, takes all of the deci- decision making away that makes it kind of fun. Like, Again, like as exactly as you said in constructed, especially you have the creativity and the freedom within a card pool constraint to do whatever you want. And so you sure. have the foundation of the card pool and then you get to do whatever. And that's the fun and the creativity aspect of that. In draft, you're subject to the pack and what what has been opened in your pack and you get to choose from that and build a deck off of that and off of your picks. And so like there's a very simple constraint and you get to do whatever you want with it. And sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, but like that's the main mindset. This, mm-hmm. you just buy two packs, shuffle up, and you're there. And it's like, uh, yeah, there's no, you don't get to be creative except for picking your two packs. And like, I right. don't think that that's very interesting. To, to really, I think, simplify everything, you kind of hit it. Uh, it takes all the decision making out of it, and that's it's just part boring. of what's fun. Like, I am not saying that you wouldn't have fun playing this style. Yeah. Of, oh, you absolutely it, will. It's magic. We've said it before. You're gonna you love won't it. have a. Bad yeah, it, you're playing magic. It's a game. It's a very fun game. Cool. But uh, part of the fun for me are those decisions, like thinking about things. Yep. Uh, that tickles my analytical part of the brain. I don't know yeah. which side that's on. <laughs> but he's up there um and yeah this just takes it out and yep. that's lame it is um there are good cards in it but i don't want to talk about it because i'm not going to play it there are some really good cards in it worth saying but um yeah i think it's you know we'll, i'll try it but i just i'm not into okay. it um it's a big card it. pool too I, I would play it on arena right now especially just because everyone's fucking bored at home and it's gonna be oh yeah do. oh yeah uh no, that's like I don't think I'll ever go to to a card shop to play. No, no. Personally, it just doesn't seem fun to me. Seems like a waste of ink. Hey, oh, a little bit harsh. Uh, so yeah, that's kind of my thoughts on Jumpstart too. It feels gimmicky uh, as well as Double Masters. Um, and now we come to Corset. The- 2020 yeah. 20. so uh this one's coming out i do know the release date of this one just offhand uh it's july 3rd um and got it circled. do what i said he's got it circled i, I, I do have me. it circled no i i know that because shameless plug if you would like to enter our giveaway <laughs> um uh <laughs> we already have our acoria bun or excuse me i said acoria bundle like three times in a video the other day and i felt like an idiot um it's yeah. the uh the core 2021 bundle giveaway uh, if you'd like to enter, I'm going to move us back here. Uh, all you got to do is subscribe to the channel, comment on any video with core 20, hashtag core 2021, and you're entered. And we'll cool. comment back to you and do all that stuff, nope. but that's it. That's all you got to do. Um, you're yeah. entered to win. Uh, we'll do that giveaway on July 6th is when we're going to choose the winner. That's the Monday after this releases. But uh, we're not going to go through every single card in this by any means um especially yeah, given that we've already talked about two sets um but some things right now. Do you... no. we'll I... talk about a set review who knows if you'll get it or not yeah i think T- it'd be fun but i don't know tbd yeah exactly um so we've talked a l- I- i've talked a little bit about this set with some other people uh and i actually kind of yeah. did my initial thoughts on it uh when some of the spoilers first came out um okay I think this set is a really good representation of how far the power curve has gone. Uh, If you look at previous core sets, I don't think that we are at the... I think we're well past the power level of previous core sets, is what I will say. 
Sure. Um, I'll give you that. Uh, and uh, things that I'm excited about with this, actually, because no doubt about it, this set looks amazing. Like, it's a core set, yet it looks crazy good. Um, we've got crazy sure. good, like, reprints. Massacre Worm is here. Baneslayer Angel is here. Both fantastic. Azusa is here. Um, uh, excuse me. That is one of my faves. Yeah. Um, use... Grim Tutor is a $180 card right now. Um for yeah, the original version go. and it. take it yeah uh so there's some really cool stuff there's also some cool new like tribal things that they're doing like uh we've always had cats hence nine dogs, lives dogs, dogs, dogs. do what dogs, dogs. yeah dogs 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 dude i'm excited dogs look kind of sweet um dogs, finally here's my question do they retroactively make every hound a dog i think they now said they were um, I'm not 100% sure, but I believe that's the, the case. Um, so. But yeah, Ren and Siri, uh, inseparable, are the dog-cat tribal combo. Um, and it's kind of sweet. Like, Naya dog slash cat, or cat dog. People are just going to make cat dog references like the entire time. But um, I'm really excited for that. Uh, the new, like, shrines are really, really sweet. Sanctum of All is a really interesting card. Um, Ugin is reprinted. <laughs> Again. Uh, Solemn is reprinted. We've got the Chromatic Orrery, uh, which I think is a really cool card. Uh, we're getting the Temples back, and we've got new like showcase lands, which I think are you know they're nice. Um, they're they're very very pretty. I think I they like are them. pretty. Yeah. Um, interesting choices on it, but I do like them. I think they they're gonna look uh, good I, in I paper. Love it. I, I think they did it. They did such a good job with those. Um, just honestly, they are. They're in pretty. My opinion, they're very pretty. I think they pushed it a little bit, which I like. Um, it, oh, it's it's fantastic. I wasn't expecting it. I'm glad it's here. Yeah. Look at that. Um, uh, worth noting, too, we are getting, like, the what we've been getting, which is the, like, premium booster boxes or collector booster boxes. We are getting that back with this set as well, um, I believe. So I think we're getting a lot of cool stuff with this. But uh, Fable Passage reprints, um, Animal Sanctuary, which is like the cutest dang land I've ever seen. Look at these little kitties. Look it's at them. just, oh, it's good. It just makes me happy. It's got bird, cat, dog, goat, ox, and or snake. Look at this little guy. Um, anyway, um, so yeah, there's a lot of really, really cool stuff what in this. What a terrible but... combination to have in one place. <laughs> yeah, right? There's <laughs> the ox, the ox, char the ox charge, cat. Because, you know, the everybody... Cats away. The dogs chase the cats. <laughs> everybody wants to put a 1-1 just... counter on their yoked ox. Oh, um, bro, yes. We're gonna get that ox of gains. That's what yes. I like to see. Thank you, Thank you um, wizards. Uh, yeah, this, uh, um, this set looks to be one of the strongest that I've seen in a long, long time. Just in terms of maybe not peak card, um, but... Overall, it's very good. Um, I think... Can I just throw out the best card that I think... Maybe the best card in the set? Yeah, what do you think? Throw out there. Um, I think Spark Hunter Manticore is probably uh, the is best the, splash card. The artifact? Yeah, discard yeah, this a thing? card. So there's a little interaction. That's not really a cost. Yeah. But this is essentially hold it until they play planeswalker and then you just pop them out and kill it yeah i think this is going to be really really good uh, not even just sideboard tech but like in a control deck like this just seems yeah. great hell yeah um, you can give him an indestructible and you can snipe stuff yeah Holy crap. not to mention like discarding a card is not a downside like you oh, can very easily make that an upside <laughs> you know what i mean yeah, that works from escape now. In standard, so. Yeah, oh, cool. that's a good point too. Yeah, cool, cool. Uh, yeah, this. I mean, Very good. the uncommons are even like this. Thick. Like Watcher of the Spheres single handedly gave me renewed hope in blue white flyers as a standard deck. Um, <laughs> so uh, funny story. Uh, in turn one, Soul Ring. If you're watching, because I do know you watch pretty much everything. Um, he uh he gave us he's given us a million different deck lists and it's much appreciated and we've had a lot of fun playing with them. Uh, one because of them because we we're what? Because we're dumb and we need deck lists. We do. If anyone's out there, oh my gosh, we do. Deck lists, baby. <laughs> 
Um, but so, and normally I will say like his deck lists have been in some cases very surprisingly, but most often they are very, very good. I think a lot of times I initially look at it and I'm like, eh, I don't know. And then we get into the games and I'm like, oh, okay, I get you. I get you. You're, you're hit hiding it for me. Um, but anyway, uh, the one bad deck, not even bad deck, the one just not standard ready deck was the blue white flyers list. It was not there yet. Like there are a lot of pieces uh, that came out of Akoria, especially, and just in the last year that we've gotten, there's like the Imperion Eagle, things like that, all of which yeah, are yeah. great. And individually, you would like look at that pile of cards and be like, yeah, this is great. It's and not it there. Not, it have it, it's not thing. fast enough for standard. Like, that's all it is. Right. That's, so, all right, you're, you're talking to someone who drafted blue-white flyers almost exclusively yeah. uh, as much as he could. Uh, <laughs> Unless there was something else that seemed fun. Yeah. But that's kind of my safety fallback. Yeah. Um, is is really blue flyers, blue white flyers, whatever. You can draft it all over. Yep. Uh, the strength with that is that no one expects blue white to be an aggro deck. Yeah. Um, but blue white flyers is. And oh, yeah. When you have a standard environment with a lot of creatures with reach um, or just a lot of good efficient removal, uh, and sweepers to that end. We have a multitude of them right now. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it's very hard to kind of pilot because if you're going to tool your deck a little bit more blue, you need a little bit more like, I like leaning to the blue elements. You want some card draw stuff. Yep. Don't put counters in, in aggro decks. I don't care who you are. Don't do <laughs> <No>. it. <laughs> uh, so I'm thinking like, you know, play your ops, play stuff that rounds out your curve that you keep drawing your threats. Cool. Play into the blue stuff. But what you lose there is some of your aggro tools. Yep. Uh, and when Blue-White Flyers has been most successful is when you have lords. Lords yeah. make Blue-White Flyers. Oh, yeah. And, and You're this, exactly right. Yeah. Ah, uh, Now we can be as fast as red with evasion and usually bigger bodies. Most <laughs> of my flyers are two tools, motherfucker. What are you going to do? <laughs> well, and that is the problem right now in stand... Not even a problem, but, like, the skew of decks right now tends to be, like, the aggro decks are... There's like three main options that I can think of just off the top of my head. And I might be wrong. I'll say four to be safe. Mono red, obvious. Um, of course. Always. Sacrifice decks. And I'm going to put knights and sacrifice decks kind of in the same kind of category because there's a little bit of splash over between the two every once in a while. Um, mono green stompy, I would consider very aggro right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and then the cyclers deck. But the problem I have with the cyclers deck is it doesn't actually aggro super well unless it has the right, right draw um the thing that is annoying as fuck about that <laughs> dumbass motherfucking deck god i hate that fucking thing it's i'm serious this thing is stupid okay you you tell me you can be completely losing the game okay i'm talking like you are you are at one i am at I 12 okay and just uh -huh. because you draw a fucking Zenith Flare, you get to win. And I'm like, screw that crap. Yeah. That's such crap. Like, that does not work. <laughs> like, that should not work. Um, I was like so... Right now. I know, I'm sorry. I just, I hated that. Um, I felt so good today, uh, as of the recording of this today, I should say. Um, I was playing a Grixis Control List, and I had Ashiok, and I got to exile their stupid ass graveyard <laughs> and they lost all their power for their Zenith flare and I'd shut them down and it felt so good. Yeah. Um, the, yeah. The, um, the Cyclers deck is to me, like if decks were a scene in a TV show is mm. the Cyclers deck is the hero hanging off the edge. Yeah. And everyone else is the villain, like stepping on his fingers, like, ha, ha, what are you going to do? And then he's just like, gets a bound of strength and like yeah. flips up kicks the guy off yeah it's like the know. ending to a show where you think you know what that was kind of a cheap shot and it's yeah, like, like that's such really? shit yeah like you couldn't they have made him win in a cool that? way um yeah i mean like, i get uh, it like cool. they they have to cycle through a lot of cards to make zenith flare good but they have zenith flare you play it for like three and all of a sudden it's a six point swing because you deal three and gain three and so now all of a sudden you just get to win look Top decks have always existed. Yeah. Kevin, if you weren't in the position to lose to a top deck, you're right. You wouldn't have lost. Well, I didn't this time because fuck that deck. Um, anyway.
I'm yeah, sorry. I really get tilted at the cycler's deck. I don't know why. I shouldn't. I I have played multiple yeah. versions and I hate it. Like I don't I don't like playing it. You, I have never seen you more um, jazz than when you mill someone out. So oh, I know. Maybe actually when you storm off on like turn three or something. I like that the. Right. The cruel irony to all of this is that I'm complaining about a mechanic that is pretty much loved by most players, just in general. <laughs> it's not the mechanic. <laughs> no, it isn't the mechanic, it's the deck. But yes. the 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 funny thing is like but Mill and Storm are my favorite decks, and it's like, okay, well, they yeah. Are pretty much not like hated, but certainly dreaded and like I kinda begrudged. think they're hated. I kind of think they're hate, hated. I hate Mill because it doesn't win. Like, Yeah, but Storm definitely tilts people. Oh yeah, Storm, but, but Mill, like, like, eh. Mill, you don't hate until you lose to it, and then you're like, okay, this was some shit. <laughs> like, <laughs> oh, I forgot you could do this, and that's really It's, like, super annoying because it takes a while, usually. Like, you can't, you can yeah. turbo Mill, but it it's still not exactly as fast as you think it would be. Um, the best mill deck I've ever played is the is the um, uh, infinite mill that I played against you. Oh, that's and the it. JDC, yeah, that was pretty cool. Yeah. Um, but that be, that's the only good mill deck I've ever played. Um, well, because every other deck has phantasm and is like, <laughs> don't kill me, I might win in seventeen turns. Yes. <laughs> and then it does. I anyway. like I like uh like archive trap mill and stuff like that where you can get like okay, a lot of mill. cards. Um, archive trap is nasty. I like archive trap just as a standalone card. Just... Oh, it's just super good. Mill thirteen for free. When yeah, you fetch a land, I'm just here. You get rid of thirteen. <laughs> yeah. Um, like, oh, well, that's delicious. Yeah, it just feels good. Um, but speaking of mill, uh, yeah, this whole conversation totally had a purpose i didn't plan that but uh we do have mill as a keyword now which i think is really interesting um not really it's just that's a oh. thing people are kind of going crazy about it but mill I is a keyword that. now isn't that I cool that. what card is that uh it's a fairy's tutelage yep Where you at, BB? yeah that's pretty cool right Hold on. Uh, when it enters the battlefield you draw a card then you discard a card when you draw a card target opponent mills two cards uh, oh look at that yeah so we actually do have a keyword for it now which is honestly just gonna save text um once they can get rid of the like in parentheses thing because <laughs> they're gonna have to do that for a little while unfortunately but well not only that but it's a corset i think everything in a corset has the parentheses yeah, you're right um, it does by of it being an introductory set potentially for new players so here's my um, speculation though are you ready for this it I've never been more ready. All right, so they just made Mill an official keyword on one card in a core set. Okay. How much of a sign do you think it is that Mill is going to be much more supported very, very soon? Is that a zero? That's a zero. Is it in frame? Yeah, there it is. Now you are. You think it's a zero? I think there's chances. I think there's chances. Mill is never supported and constructed. Um, so, um, I disagree. Name me a standard season. Gate crash, consuming aberration, single-handedly did really, really well, along with uh. When did consuming aberration win anything? Uh, it was, I believe, maybe I'm wrong, but it was pretty good for quite a while. I are you looking this up? You look this up because I don't I feel like it. Deck. With breaking and entering, uh, and there were a few other like mill cards. Maybe I'm wrong. I don't know, but I know I that there was a decent mill deck with that in uh, in Gate Crash days. Uh, let me look at the Pro Tour. I don't think that it I... wasn't a like Pro Tour winning for sure. You're you're right there. If you, it's maybe not tier one, but it was up there as okay. Is consuming aberration a great card? Yes. Oh yeah, super good. Will that deck win here and there? Yes. Uh, I think it won above average for a mill deck. If that makes sense. Like, it was a step above what we'd have in standard before. Ah, ah, but therein is the key for a mill deck. Okay, fair. Yeah, that's fair. It was good for a mill deck. It was tier two. Oh, come on. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah, um, <laughs> not supported. 
Um, Mill, like, will... Mill beats a lot of... Like, that's not fair. Mill beats decks randomly. I said it wrong. <laughs> <laughs> You're doing great. Mill it's the first some... one back, guys. Let's let's give it a break. <laughs> Mill can beat, like, sweep the floor with certain decks. Well, okay, but here's my speculation, though. Here's here's the reason I say this. One, the keyword is like a hint to me. And maybe I'm reading too much into it, and that's fine. But the other thing I'd like to think is that with Escape in Standard right now, uh-huh. it's kind of a safe time to print Mill stuff because it has a natural counterpart in Escape. Do you see what I'm saying? I'm just... Look, if if Zendikar Rising gets here and there's like a decent mill deck, I'm gonna come back and I'll be like, "Hey man, I fucking told you. you." I promise you this. Yeah, there will be cards that mill in Zendikar Rising. Yeah, maybe even more. Uh, no, that is the next. Excuse me, I'm being an idiot. <laughs> there will be cards that mill in Zendikar Rising. Yeah, will those cards? Will that deck be competitive? No. <laughs> it will not be competitive. Will that deck win? Yes. Sometimes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I have hopes. That's all. Don't crush my dream, man. Hey, hey, hey have your hope. I have high hopes. You... I'm gonna be. Look, if I'm wrong, don't tell me. Just like. <laughs> I won't tell you. I'll accept it behind the scenes, and then we can talk about it. But I'm gonna need some time. I will. I have know. a soft spot for Mill, man. I know you do. It's that little part in your head that never completely growed in from when you were a baby. I know exactly where it is. It was sent to the to the graveyard by a, a wizard who liked to mill things. Um, that was a bad. That was so bad. I made a joke about a grown man having a soft skull and trying to like smoke him. Um, I don't know which was worse. <laughs> man, it's good to be back on the podcast. Um. Okay, so my thing, though, is that, uh, as we said at the very beginning of looking at Corset 2021, it's pretty powerful. I'm a little, like, I don't know that there's a card. I, I'm not saying there's cards that need to be banned in it by any means, but I do think it's a pretty good representation of the power level and where it's heading. Because um, this yeah, is it, a core set, and you look at some of the cards, it's like, that's ah, pretty good for a core set. Yeah, it's very good. I just, everybody... Remember this moment here. Yeah. The next set that just fucking <clears throat> is terrible, just sucks. It's like, oh man, they gave us like two good cards, tops. It's okay. We need it. <laughs> We're making up for the mistakes of power creep. <laughs> like, I'm just tired it's, of it's bannings, gonna, man. That's the thing. It's gonna come to a head. Either cards are gonna get ha- banned to high heaven. Yeah. Or there's going to be sets that just are really embarrassing for a while. Yeah. And if that happens, don't panic. No. It's okay. Yeah. We're making up like that's like course at 2020, uh, 2021, excuse me, 2020 wasn't maybe. that great. I, years are tough. Every day is the same right now. I don't know what day it is right now. I think <laughs> I have to work tomorrow. I'm not sure. Um, um but yeah, I, I don't really think, other than that, there's not a whole lot I want to say on Corset 2021. We may or may not do a set review. We've talked about it. We'll kind of figure out if we have time and everything. Um, I'd like to. Yeah, who knows? Who knows? Um, but that's obviously like a good there bit are, of work. So. There's a couple like infinite combos that we've already mapped. Yeah. I say we, not Kevin and I. We're too stupid. But the magic community, let me not speak for Kevin. I'm I do stupid. have a soft spot, um, I've been told. Damn. Oh, that was beautiful. Um, Way to bring that one back. <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah, there's a couple infinite combos um, that we can bring up. Like, this this is just a great set. It deserves its time in the sun. Yep. Um, but we'll play it very soon. So yeah, I'm excited. I think it'll be fun. Um, all right, so moving to our last little piece, uh, which we haven't done in such a long time. I'm excited. We're doing the crack a pack Woo! Oh, shit. Um, and we're we actually... Doing? Okay, so here's my question. We have the Kraka pack, yeah. man. Um, do you want to do Core Set 2021, or do you want to do Akoria? Because we can technically do both. They've both been spoiled. Let's do 2021. Christmas came early. Yeah. All right, it's let's jump in. 
Um, so Let's go. What is, uh... Ghostly Pilfer is our rare. It's two one for one and a blue. Uh, if it comes untapped, you may pay two. If you do, you draw a card. Uh, whenever an opponent casts a spell from anywhere other than their hand, you draw a card, and then you can discard a card, and it can't be blocked this turn. Um, I do like that as a rare. It's a I little do, niche, I, but it's fine. Yeah. I don't see another... I'm having trouble making out everything. Let me make this big. Hold on. Okay, that's better. Um, I don't really... This isn't an amazing pack, is what I will no, say. No, this pack is kind of bad. I don't like There's Riddle a Watchdog, Horn. though, and he's a good boy. He's, so. he's the best boy. He's the goodest boy, and I acknowledge <laughs> him. I pat him, and I move on. Yeah. Um, I, I think, think we just take the Ghostly Pilfer. I think the Pilfer is kind of the best card in yeah. the pack. Yeah, yeah. Hands down. Uh, it's not a great card. No. Um, for I don't love seeing it for limited, but... I think the the thing you may be trying to go for, and I don't know how well this is supported, so this is just kind of a speculative thing. Um, Play it on. Yeah. I think what you try and do is kind of get a lot of card draw, which that is supported, obviously. Card draw in itself is just kind of a thing. Um, opt is it. You're gonna print opt forever, I yeah. guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> Uh, you get a lot of card draw, so you can discard cards and then be able to to make it unblockable. And then maybe you get things that are like even like light of promise. If you can get some life gain in the deck, you can start throwing one one counters on it, and then you just have a really decent unblockable thing. Um, yeah, I mean that's it's fine. It's fine. I, again, it's, I think it's so probably... speculative though because that's relying on so many things. I think it's the best out of the pack. I wouldn't be entirely shocked if you ended up not playing it, though. Yes, I um, think I agree with that. Um, but that being said, it's a pick that leaves you open because I'm okay with that. Like, it kind if if it's supported, um, it's not going to be the. I'll say it's not going to be the star of my deck. I'm not going to draft a deck that makes Ghostly Pilfer an all star. But yeah. if it happens to be in a good like blue aggro style deck, I'm happy to play it. Yep, I think I'm that. Okay with it. It's very safe to say. Um, yeah, that's about it. This was a fairly unexciting pack, though. Yeah, that pack is booty. Yeah. Um, all right. Okay, well, here's the deal. Yeah. This is the moment that we have found ourselves in. We have recorded for 52 minutes and 28 seconds. Okay. Um, it's been a fun one. I had a lot of fun. This has been great. Yeah. Um, the worry that I have is when I hit stop recording. <laughs> is this it? Right I, now, I have to are, hope. Right now, we're entertaining you in our hearts and minds. Yeah. But once we hit stop, it's like Schrodinger's podcast. We don't know if it's actually <laughs> going to work. We have to be like, I have to manage my expectations because last time I got so tilted, we didn't record for like two weeks. Yeah. <laughs> so like, I have to make sure. You're right. You're right. It's okay if it doesn't work, but I'm going to fucking kill somebody. Probably yeah. who owns a cycling deck. Kevin, listen. Yeah. We just have to love our fate. Okay. More hockey, baby. If it didn't work, it didn't work. We had this fun time. We hung out. We talked. We pretended to entertain some people. Yeah. The people. Our people. Our man. people. Um, I'm gonna take a second. Yeah. Um, if I may, speaking on our people. Um, have it. I just. Are yours. I just want to take a minute and say thank you to uh, our good friend Alex, uh, who is a friend of the My channel. God for quite a while uh he used to play with us on the the cube draft nights and things like that but he also did the road to 100 wins way back in the day um really really stoked because he is now obviously moderating our discord if you are in our discord um you've you've probably hung out with proxy the goat that is him um i would just like to say alex is a is a wonderful guy not to cut you off i've known alex for a long time um he's a good buddy he's a great dude yeah Um, um yeah, go drop in and say, hey, tell them the podcast sent you. Or, t- shit, tell them whatever you want. I don't know. Yeah. He's a grown man. He can He can take it. I, he can take it. <laughs> uh, I really do um, appreciate Alex. Um, he's yeah. he's a super good guy, as Will said. Really, really nice guy. He really, really I knows. Him. Alex, I will come to your house and scalp you. Whoa, peaky. Um, uh, are, are you good? You're holding it up like you're going to say something else. I'm not. Keep going. All right. That actually sounded pretty good. Um, <laughs> uh, he really knows his commander stuff. Uh, so if you do have any questions about cards or anything, he's a great resource. Uh, and he is available in the Discord. I'm also in the Discord a good bit. Uh, and I think, Will, you're going to be jumping in maybe. So, um, yeah, potentially. Guys, I work weird hours. Also. Yeah. 
I have a baby. Yeah, Will's I'm- generally pretty busy. <laughs> um, but uh, very excited to have a great group of people there uh, speaking to our community. It's been really refreshing to see a community of, you know, relatively few people, but 50 to 60 people who are like, just oh, really happy and nice people to talk to. They're like from across the, I mean, all across the world, different kinds of uh, people from all ages, but like they're just nice people. And it's yeah. so nice to have people in there who are not trolls. <laughs> um, Thank God. Yeah. I mean, that's going to happen eventually and we'll have to, you know, beat them up. But uh, <laughs> I'm really happy to say that we've got a great community and I've, I'm just really proud of that, to be honest. So thank you to everybody oh, yeah. in there. Oh, if yeah. you want to oh, join yeah. our Discord, the link's below. Anybody is welcome. Uh, just don't be a fucking troll. Yeah, for sure. That's all. Absolutely. Mm. Sick. Third. Gatorade's um, lovely. Not a sponsor. I guess we have to say that now. We're monetized. Oh, that's right. Uh, whiskey. <laughs> uh, what are you drinking? We should have let, let off with that. We can do that now. We can just say we're drinking and doing a podcast. That can uh, be our marketing. This, this is Bullet Bourbon. I say Bullet because it's, there's an EI and not Bullet, but it could be Bullet. I mean, I've always called it Bullet when i had when i drank bourbon but in my heart of hearts i want to say bullet but i want also to seem a little bit bougie yeah but it says frontier whiskey on the bottle so i guess you can't really (laughs) it's bullet fuck it um yeah so i bought a rye and their bourbon Um, yeah i'm trying to decide which i like more uh and i'm not sure yet we need to we need to have a whiskey taste test i um, yeah i'm down i i'm i mean i'm a scotch guy um you're more of a bourbon guy but like i'd be down to do just a bunch of different yes but i'll say i my first rye whiskey is this blue rye and i don't think you would like i don't know i don't want to speak for you but no, like you're fine. i enjoy it. have you ever had a rye whiskey do you know i don't what? believe that i have technically so it's super spicy like oh. where bourbon is very sweet yeah rye is almost like the antithesis of that it's it's very like spicy yeah I, that, that's the best way i can describe it um so it's a very interesting flavor huh. um no uh, no smokiness to speak of really so mm-hmm. it doesn't have like the scotch or irish whiskey elements it's been a while since we've spoken in this kind of fashion no yeah uh, i've had a lot of whiskey in that time but i like it i like it i went to a bar uh a rooftop bar the other night to kind of get oh, hey. out um, which one where uh in baxter um lucky duck i think was the name um mm, no i don't know where that is uh so it's across from kingsley and baxter you guys who are not around you have no idea what we're talking about but we went to my fiance caitlin and i went up to this rooftop bar just to kind of get out and we were like we need to stay outside and away from people but we want to go out and have a drink and so we found this place we went up there um and we got up to the bar and she had ordered like a sour or something like that a rose maybe yeah. And I yeah, I'm not into it. it. Can't do it. Um, but I was I like, I, I know, and that's saying it. something because you love stuff like uh, just generally speaking closer to that. But um, I just like <laughs> problem. Um, <laughs> but uh, I uh, I was like, hey, do you you know do you have what scotches do you have? Because I saw they had like bottles of other stuff. Like this wasn't just like a beer and wine bar. They clearly had other things. And I was like, so what scotches do you have? And they said, oh, uh, we've never had anybody ask for that. And I'm like, what? And they're like, yeah, we uh, we don't have scotch. Uh, we have bourbon. And I'm like, no, you don't have scotch. And I kind of I didn't get like pissed, like visibly pissed. But inside I was like, how in the world are you a bar and you don't have scotch? Like, Cause here's the thing, Kev. Bars in America don't like. Yeah, they've got scotch here and there, but but I've never it, been to a liquor bar that did not have scotch. Really? Because I feel like, although you know what, I'm saying that. Actually, no. I think I'm. I might be right. There's a wine bar. It, it's quote unquote wine bar, but yeah. it's a very fancy bar in in uh, uh, South End, and I'm trying to remember. But it's been so long. I'm talking out my ass. I just don't remember scotch on the menu, but I don't think that that's... Well, they never put it on the menu. They just have it at the bar. It's never put on the menu. 
but they generally have like a little a smaller like here's some named liquors you know? oh i see what you mean sometimes, yeah sometimes. no you're sometimes. right you're right um well anyway notice obviously i was like kind of taken aback i was like how could you not sure. and um i noticed that they had jameson so i got stuck drinking irish whiskey um, hey, hey but that's fine like jameson's fine jameson is lovely i finished my I like first it. bottle just a couple weeks oh, ago congratulations Dude, I've been through so much of my own liquor because of this pandemic. <laughs> but honestly, I've been saving money because I'm not going out to a bar. So, like, it's kind of working out. That's the thing is that's why I've tried so much whiskey, I think. Yeah. Is, like, that's a conversation for another day. <laughs> um, um, should yes. we end this episode? We should end it and just see. <laughs> All right. Um, guys, I really want to thank everybody for hopefully sticking with us through this. It's great to be back. Hopefully this actually worked and you're seeing it. If not, fuck it. We're tilted. We're done. We quit. Um, but <laughs> I can say that cause nobody will see it. Um, uh, really do. Maybe I really do appreciate all the support lately guys, but, uh, we're going to get out of here. My name is Kevin. My name is Will. And this has been, it resolves. Time to get fucking sloshed.